So yeah, it's been a while since I've done uh, Big R's vlog. So it's time to do one tonight. That's Corinne back there, by the way. She waved over the yeah. She's being dwarfishly short back there. But. Not much option there, dear. No, not much option. So anyway, uh, finally finished performing the Legends Unleashed document while adding a ton of new material to it at nearly 75,000 words. It's a solid book with some highly innovative material for Heroic and Legendary Gaming for all Savage fans. And I'm really thrilled to finally be done with that part. Now, it doesn't mean it's completely everything done and, and I'm not touching it anymore, but what this means, basically, is that uh, after a, another... Uh, day of letting some other folks take a, a run at some suggestions and clarifications, uh, at which point I'll go ahead and put those. Tomorrow evening I will be kicking this off to uh, Paul Barrett, who is my first stage editor on this thing, and mute that in just case it's too loud, and he's going to do the editing thing, um, after which uh, it will come back to me. Meanwhile, my crew of Flock, uh, Raven's Flock, are going to be still going through and finding mostly mechanical stuff I think they're going to be looking at for me to clarify. Uh, and I'll input all that stuff when I get the document back. And then it goes to Miss Editor-in-Chief for Evil Beagle back there for her final touch on it to be sure that she is satisfied that all edits are where they need to be. After that... It will then go to Aaron Ace Vito, Savage Mojo, for editing and layout. Or not editing, but for layout and design. Uh, so that process, that pipeline is still, you know, it's got some, some work ahead of it. But a key, key factor was done, especially reformatting the entire thing. And as I said, adding a bunch of really cool stuff. Uh, the faction play stuff I'm still really excited about. And I did some revisions on the epic mass battle system and... Added a bunch of important characters. Uh, so, yeah. So, there's that. Thanks to Al Bear for the incredible job he's done uh, giving me exceptional reality checks on a lot of my material. If there's a new concept in there that I've introduced that makes any sense at all, it's probably his doing. He's done a really fantastic job of going, question, does this work? Maybe you should change it to this. What do you think about this? How does this work? Really, Al did a fantastic job uh, keeping it on track. All right, Kickstarter supporters, you should have received word on books being shipped out to you, specifically Legends Arise, if you were getting uh, hardcover or softcover copies. One sheets, one sheets, she <laughs> one sheets being fulfilled, uh, and related stuff like that. Uh, I am finished with this stage of things with Legends of the Leash, so I hope to spend some time with some backer privileges stuff. We have really not touched that, and I apologize, but. Core books have got to be a priority here. I think everybody would agree on that point, but um, I want to uh, at least start touching and looking at the backer privileges stuff, the characters, their stories, the, the bigger stuff where the guys are doing the kingdom, start working and getting some more movement on those so that they can start getting integrated into the different guidebooks and things that are coming. However, I have to intermingle that with guidebook one, Magic and Cosmology, uh, which has also got to get done and put into a uh, publication pipeline pretty soon. But, as a preview, uh, and again, I apologize because the camera's probably going to get this as well as I'd like, but hopefully what you see here is a HeroScape manager that is just a new, pretty cool HeroScape manager if you're familiar with the HeroScape game. Yeah, it still looks a bit blurry. They just don't like to focus very much. But anyway, uh, to give you an idea of the kind of kit bashing that goes on here in the house that Corinne built, so to speak, this is General Gunther Olar, an aged military war horse for the Olaren army. And she did a fantastic job of putting a custom head with beard, white beard. I mean, it's just amazing. I, again, I cannot do this justice, but hopefully we'll get some nice pictures done soon and start posting those up on the shinetar.com site so people can start seeing some of the work that she can do. And that those of you who got custom miniatures coming to you, you get a... everybody who has, who has bothered to answer yeah. the poll. True, everybody who's bothered to answer the poll. If you haven't, uh, you know, we're not going to keep begging you know, for you to do it. If you don't want those benefits, it's fine. we got plenty of work to do. But just to remind you that if you were a backer, uh, you should be answering you know, that, that poll. 
Uh, all right, uh, let's talk conventions, specifically the ones that I know I'm going to be attending in the very near future. Uh, Con on the Cob, Hudson, Ohio, October 17th to the 20th. Uh, links for all the cons will be down below. I always do this like every time, don't I, with the wingle fingers and everything. Is that... Derp derp. Okay, uh, so that's kind of like a good times. Oh my god, fantastic times. That'll be the site of the uh, annual Savage Saturday Night Bar and Grill. Me and Tim Hannon and the Dirty Dirty Grill uh, and Sauce Gang in his house. Uh, with Corinne and, and Craig uh, doing the massive supply and Uber mixed drinks. And then uh, Eric Simpson, who's going to be our on-site bartender again this year. Yay, having him back. Um, that'll be good times. Running some kicking, shine charge stuff, including a major epic scenario there. And just in general, it's fantastic time up in Hudson, Ohio. Uh, again, October 17th to the 20th, King Con, Warner Robins, Georgia, November 2nd and 3rd. That's middle Georgia, basically. We weren't going to be able to make it, but now we are. So uh, I'm very honored to be their, their guest. And as a matter of fact, I'm picking a crew of guests. Corinne, uh, Susan slash Su Suze Knowles, and Lee Ballou. Uh, we're all going basically as the Evil Beagle crew for King Con. So a brand new convention, gaming convention in Middle Georgia. I'm really excited about supporting that. Uh, then November 15th through the 17th, Mace up in Charlotte, North Carolina. One of the best, just pure game cons ever. You guys are amazing. Uh, looking forward to being back there. Uh, they're big time celebrating the, the massive 10-year uh, celebration for uh, Savage Worlds. Is it 10 years? Wow. Okay. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, Shangster is going to be Shane Hensley and a bunch of other guys, so it's going to be good times. Uh, and uh, then I will also, while I am at uh, Mace, uh, I'm kind of proud to kind of help kick this idea into play. To do a joint effort, same weekend, AetherCon, the online convention. Evil Beagle Games is a supporter of that, and I will be making an appearance in the online con convention of AetherCon while I am at Mace. So that'll be fun. Um, I will say, and a lot of people have been waiting for me to start doing this Roll20 stuff and start running online games. I really love the idea. I really want to be doing this. But there's only one of me, and there's a lot I've got to get done before I can start committing to that. So it's coming way later than I expected, but I am going to be getting to that. But you guys need me to write these books. You, you want the books and the information. You need the info. So i got to get that done first. All right, uh, tips and tricks tonight. Um, basically, I want to talk, talk about some, some cool gaming ideas, something called, what I call conceptual synergy, uh, which basically means never be afraid to let them roll a secondary skill or aptitude to enhance an attempt at something. Uh, you really want to re reward good conceptual thinking, both in terms of character creation and in terms of character development. So as a GM, you really want to let them have a better chance of success if they can find a creative way of intermingling their abilities and their skills to pull something off. So say you've got a group of guys, or a group of characters that are trying to investigate a mystery. None of them are really particularly good at the specific things that normally your detective type characters would. But say one of them is uh, you know, really good at just being very persuasive. And another one uh, happens to be... Uh, really good at uh, a, a gem cutting. Let's just throw that out there. I'm just pulling this completely other thing. So uh, if they can figure out some way to work that together, right? You know, it's like, well, I'm going to go and this happened in the, the, the high-end district, right? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, the, you know, you're the murderer and then there was a robbery and all that. And yes, it's where the more wealthy, you know, it's, well, I'm going to go and meet up with uh, other people who do deal, deal with uh, uh, expensive gems, right? You know, they're gem cutters and, and uh, you know, jewelry makers and things like that. And I'm going to use my expertise in that area to engage them in conversation. And uh, I'll take my friend here who's really good at persuasion, you know, just is uh, an actress and she's good at the persuading thing and, and uh, you know, kind of get their attention and get them talking and then see if we can eventually get them to start talking about what happened to see if anybody knows anything. So, hey, yeah, you know, that was a, that's a cool idea. And, you know, it, it, it kind of delves into some, you know, dealing with the character's conceptual stuff to give them a better chance at something. And maybe even leads them towards, uh, you know, uh, taking new skills that build on that. Uh, you know, so, I mean, and there's, there's classic stories in uh, thriller and detective uh, genre where you've got the character who wasn't trained classically as a detective, but because of other skills they have, they sort of fell into it naturally. So that's one way of thinking about it. But just in general, 
if anyone's ever trying to do something that their skills are not really particularly good at it, but they can come up with a secondary skill that might support what they're trying to do to give them a better chance at it, let them roll that as a supportive skill. Like in Savage Worlds, they call it cooperative roles. Or, um, you know, it, normally it means you know, somebody else is doing something to help the main character, but you can use the cooperative role system for a character to basically cooperate with themselves. In other words, they can make that secondary skill. Like, uh, I'm trying to fix this gate so that the enemy trying to destroy the castle uh, doesn't get through the gate. Well, you know, that's a repair skill. But say they have Siege Warfare as a knowledge. Let them roll their Siege Warfare knowledge skill for every success and raise. Give them a plus one towards their repair skill to fix the gate. Simple as that. Gives them a good, I combined different skills to represent a concept that I had. As opposed to, well, I only, you know, I, I built all these skills for this concept, but you only let me use one of them. Let them use the group of skills so that it really rewards that conceptual idea. So, there you go. Uh, and I'm going to call it on that. Welcome back to the Big, Big Irish Vlog. i got tons more work to do, but I'm feeling good about what I got done tonight. Peace out.